This week on Christian World News, Handel's Messiah. Do you really know the man behind the music? We'll explore the life of a composer whose faith in Christ has touched millions around the world. Plus, lifting up the God who lifts the lowly, this Hungarian musician was born on the bottom of society. Today, he's reached the heights of European music. He says it's all to the glory of God. And in the days leading up to Christmas, traditional movies remind us why we celebrate. We'll celebrate some of the classics and tell you where you can watch them. Welcome to Christian World News. I'm Wendy Griffith. Well, it's the Christmas season and choirs all over the world are performing Handel's Messiah. But how much is known about this work and the man behind it? Mark Martin traveled to London to learn more about this devout Christian composer and his work that is a holiday classic. For many, Christmas wouldn't be complete without witnessing or taking part in a performance of Handel's Messiah. From the Virginia Symphony in the U.S. to the heart of the Holy Land, Jerusalem. It is felt across the globe. To learn more about the gifted composer of Messiah, our journey takes us to Europe. German-born George Frederick Handel moved into this house on Brook Street in London, England in his late 30s. Handel considered himself an opera composer, but public interest was waning in England. And by 1741, a discouraged Handel wondered if retirement was near. Some people do think that, that um, at this point he was, it was kind of like a, a career crisis, really, and that it's quite possible that he was thinking of returning to Germany. That's when this man, Charles Jennings, handed him the words or libretto of Messiah. Jennings, a literary scholar, carefully selected Old and New Testament scriptures documenting prophecies about the Messiah, Jesus' birth, death on the cross and resurrection. The Christian message is, is in part also a response to the kind of growing interest in what is known as deism. Since the deists did not believe in the divinity of Christ, Jennings sought to counter that thinking. For Jennings, I think Messiah was a very personal passion, a very personal mission. Um, Jennings was a deeply religious man, um, a very committed Christian. We find uh, Jennings writing to another friend of his uh, saying, uh, I've done this scripture collection for Handel, and I hope he will expend his best efforts on it so that it becomes his best oratorio, because it's certainly on the best subject. The subject is Messiah. Here is Handel's composition room, where he is believed to have composed Messiah. He wrote the oratorio in only 24 days. Many believe it was divinely inspired. One music scholar described the number of errors in the 259-page score as incredibly low for a composition of its length. Handel reportedly never left his house during those three weeks, and a friend who visited discovered him sobbing with intense emotion. After he wrote the Hallelujah Chorus, reports quote him as saying, I did think I did see all heaven before me and the great God himself. For Jennings and Handel, Messiah would be an evangelistic tool to share the gospel with the masses. They even made the controversial decision to perform Messiah in theaters instead of churches to reach a wider audience, including the performers themselves. Handel used secular singer-actresses to perform the solos, such as Susanna Maria Sibber, a woman with an adulterous past, but who is described as being able to penetrate the heart with her voice, when other more skilled vocalists could only reach the ear. He touches people on every possible level, whether it be on a spiritual level or, or musical level or dramatic level. There's something in Messiah for everybody and, and of course, for an audience. If you look at the YouTube flash mob hallelujah choruses, you will see that hits are currently running at about 43 million. Now, I doubt if all those people are Protestant Christians. And if you just watch some of those flash mob hallelujahs, you can see in, you know, the people listening in the shopping mall and so on, you can see the change coming over their faces as they listen, and they are greatly moved. Oh, 
performances were often benefit concerts to help release people from debtor's prison and provide for orphans in London's well-known Foundling Hospital. One scholar wrote, Messiah has fed the hungry, clothed the naked, fostered the orphan more than any other single musical production in this or any country. However, George Frederick Handel did not want the credit. At the end of Messiah, Handel wrote the letters SDG, Soli Deo Gloria, which means to God alone the glory. Mark Martin, CBN News, London. Incredible, the story behind the song. Well, Handel's beautiful music is a great reminder that each of us is designed in our own unique, unique way to glorify God. The man in our next story found a way to do that, even with the odds stacked against him. Dale Hurd has the story of a remarkable Christian musician from Budapest, Hungary. As a member of Hungary's Roma or Gypsy community, Erden Rotz has known discrimination and obstacles, but his tremendous musical ability has taken him from one of the lowest rungs in Hungarian society to the pinnacle of European classical music as the principal double bass for the Vienna Philharmonic Orchestra. Born into a family of talented musicians, Erden's career path was already set before him at birth. When I was born, my father brought a tiny musical instrument to the hospital to see if I would take it into my hands. From my childhood, music was the most important thing in our family. Music surrounded us. Erdin began to play the double bass at age nine. By 13, he had performed his first public solo concert at the Music Academy of Budapest. He was a teenager when his cousin shared with him the message of salvation. At first, he resisted. I was not interested in what they were talking about, but my cousin started to pray. And when I started to pray too, I started crying, and I couldn't stop crying. And when he went to a church service and the altar call was given, he and his mother went forward. He asked us if he could play one of his favorite gospel songs for us. You are my hiding place. Many have lived in Hungary for centuries, having migrated from northern India. They're the largest minority in Hungary. They were victims of the Holocaust and still face discrimination across Europe. The Roma people should not be excluded from society, but included, so that we can share with them the love of God, so that they can be saved. And Erdogan says God has given the Romani special gifts. The Roma people have a special talent for arts and dance and music, and especially for improvised music. This is something that can't be taught. We are born with it. His career has taken him all over the world, but he says one of his favorite cities is New York, where at Carnegie Hall he has met and worked with such names as Yo-Yo Ma and Michael Tilson Thomas. Erdogan says when he plays, he offers his music as a sacrifice to God, and that makes a real difference in his performance. When I go on stage, I tell the Lord, I want to serve you with my music. Let it be a great sacrifice to you. And when an artist plays like this, it's a special experience for the audience. Dale Hurd, CBN News, Budapest. Thanks, Dale. Well, at Christmas season, we rightly focus on that night in Bethlehem when God became a little child. Now, popular New York City pastor Tim Keller is going way beyond the manger in his book, Hidden Christmas. As Paul Strand reports, Keller puts the Christmas story into the widest possible context, God's courageous, infinite sacrifice to save souls. The world is a dark place. Uh, spiritually, uh, and there needed to be some kind of light that came into the world. Jesus is the light of the world. Pastor Keller scoffs at those who, in the Christmas glow, contend humans can all get together and save this fallen world. 
that mankind can be the light. Well, that's not what the Bible says. It doesn't say uh, that a light has sprung from the, from the earth because we're not capable of dealing with our darkness. We need to have light from outside that comes and dispels the darkness. Keller points out how a teenager in her obeying and submitting to carrying Jesus became a model to all who want to bring Christ into themselves and see him do wonders. We're all like Mary in that if we say to God, uh, I am the handmaiden of the Lord, let it be unto me according to thy will, God's going to do great things in the world through us. The New York City pastor quotes from the carol, O Little Town of Bethlehem. Cast out our sin and enter in, be born in us today. There is a sense in which Christ is formed in us when we submit ourselves in faith and repentance to God. In Hidden Christmas, Keller explains, Christmas and the Incarnation mean that God went to infinite lengths to make himself one whom we can know personally. He became subject to hunger, uh, to weariness. He became subject, obviously, to torture and to death. And there is no other religion that says that. There's no other religion that says the creator God of the universe became a human being and went through all the same things we go through. Keller also writes, no other religion has a God who needed courage. Jesus could save us only by facing an agonizing death. He became mortal and vulnerable so that he could suffer, be betrayed and killed. He faced all these things for you and he thought it worth it. We have a God who loved us so much that he was willing to need courage and to face suffering and death for us. It, it was an infinite cost and he was willing to pay it. And he loves you so much, he'd do it all just for you. Paul Strand, CBN News, by the Capitol Christmas Tree. Merry Christmas, Paul. Thank you for that. Well, up next, celebrating the classics, the films that bring out the spirit of Christmas and help us celebrate this special season. Hello, this is Pat Robertson. The Bible tells us that there's great power in God's Word. Hearing, speaking, and obeying the Word of God will transform your life. That's why I've recorded the Transforming Word, Volume 3, Proverbs, Verses of Wisdom, Favor, and Anointing. The Transforming Word, Volume 3, will deepen your faith and help you discover the promises God has for you. I encourage you to listen to these verses often and say them aloud with me. You will find honor, guidance, favor, and the wonderful abiding presence of our Lord. Let the powerful Word of God transform your heart, mind, and life. Get the Transforming Word, Volume 3, Audio CD, and the Three Blessings DVD. Call now or go to CBN.com. I'm Ephraim Graham, and this is Studio 5. Cruise with me as I discover the good things happening in the world of music, sports, television, and movies. The fact that Ryan Coogler was going to be directing the film, I knew that something special was going to happen. We'll chat with artists at the forefront of entertainment and explore the connection between popular culture and faith. I asked my pastor, I said, well, does that mean I'm supposed to be a preacher? He says, well, no, you already have a pulpit. Watch Studio 5, Wednesday night at 930 as the world watches from the outside. It's a big diplomatic tug of war here in the Middle East. Go inside the story with Jerusalem Dateline. Israeli archaeologists are talking about a discovery that could change the thinking about the Temple Mount. Join CBN Jerusalem Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell and get the biblical perspective on the events shaping the world. It's what starts in Israel then ends up going to other places. Watch Jerusalem Dateline Friday night at 930 on the CBN News Channel. Welcome back to Christian World News. Christmas movies are a great way to get in the holiday mood. There are classic and familiar stories that warm the heart of every member of the family year after year. There are also new movies aiming to, be to become classics. Ephraim Graham has a look at a few of the family-friendly films you can find streaming right now. And help me, help me to sponge away the writing on this stone if I repent. And I do repent, I do repent. Ebenezer Scrooge in the Charles Dickens classic A Christmas Carol begins our look at five streaming holiday films. There are quite a few modern remakes of this movie available now on Hulu. God bless us, everyone. 
the interesting thing is it's on surface, it's all fun and roaring fires and mm -hmm. horse chestnuts and, <laughs> and snow and dancers and blind man's buff, but the genius of Dickens is that he transcends all that and it's really about being a human being and finding out what it is to be a human being and how you can share the world a little bit. And I think that's why it resonates, that's why still that, that, that book gets sold in its millions around the world. Filmmaker Bharat Naluri turns the page on the classic tale. Why Christmas? Why not? Does anybody really celebrate it anymore, apart from our clerk? With The Man Who Invented Christmas, it's the story behind Dickens' best-selling book, now streaming on Amazon. Did you approach this as an adventure story in terms of how you wanted it told? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it is an adventure story. It, it's, it's a, you know, I, people always forget it's a bit of science fiction. You know, it's a man who goes back and it's back to the future. It's a man who goes back <laughs> in time and meets himself <laughs> and becomes a better person for it. And it's just, it was the first time it was ever done, 1843. I mean, no one had done it before. Even yeah. the time machine hadn't been written by H.G. No one had even had that. And so for me, it's a great rollicking adventure. That's, I, it always has been. Humbug. What is? Christmas. <laughs> what about it? Well, I mean, what is it but an excuse for picking a man's pocket every 25th of December? And we now move from the man who invented Christmas to... Hang on! Cyrus! Jonah! I expected a left turn two deserts ago. These wise guys are lost. That's it. I'm fighting through the reins. You might call this the greatest story never told. Huh? Ah! The star gives us a look at the very first Christmas through the eyes of the animals. You jump out and create a distraction. Hey! It's a story we've heard so many times, and so if it was gonna be worth making a movie about this at all, we had to find a way to present it in a fresh way. And, and that's where we decided to tell the story from the point of view of the animals. Animator Timothy Record directs the film and the star-packed cast of voices. It's the wise men. Hide quickly. Ooh. Look out! The other, way. the other left. Oh, Deborah. Are you okay? Including Tyler Perry, Tracy Morgan, and Oprah Winfrey as camels. The new king's in danger. Run for your life! Get out of the way! The star is streaming now on Netflix. You ever feel like he's trying to talk to us? Gina Rodriguez is the voice of Mary. Where do you go to play an animated mother of Jesus? Where do you research? There you go. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, where do you research? Um, you know, I grew up with a nativity story. So I am very aware of the story, like, it, yeah, it's ingrained in me. Alongside the star, Netflix is also streaming new and original holiday films. I figured if you donate your old toys, I'll deliver them for free. Tonight. In Klaus, a klutzy postman sets out to deliver toys to children who've written touching letters to a rather reclusive toy maker. He does, through his actions, get these people who all were so hate, hating of each other to be like, hey, why do we hate each other? Why are we fighting all these years? What's... And we're just the same. We're the same. We're all... And I think that's, to me, what it's all about. And there's Holiday in the Wild, starring Rob Lowe and Kristen Davis, and an endless sea of animals. We are coming home, right? This year it's going to be Christmas in Africa. What is Christmas in Africa? Well, I can't speak for the whole continent, but here at the Elephant Orphanage, they celebrate all week, and there is no shopping involved. This movie has all of the classic, you know, hallmarks of, of those romantic, you know, movies, and, and you know, you, you have to start with them not like <laughs> <laughs> That's the hardest acting I had to do. Aww. <laughs> oh, you're coming on this too? Yep. Sarah Collinsworth, in case you want to write my name down on a complaint form. Oh, you're the pilot. And from Graham, CBN News. Looks good. Well, up next, Christmas in the Holy Land. See the sights and sounds that draw Christians to Israel to celebrate the birth of Jesus. It's about the competition. I kind of put that pressure on myself, and I think people had expectations. It's about overcoming. We use this phrase all the time, keep chopping, keep practicing hard. It's about going the distance. You know, I think as a father, it's my job, you know, to lead, just be the best husband and father I can be. Watch Going the Distance with Sean Brown Saturday night at 7.30 on the CBN News Channel. 
Orphans Promise is committed to loving and serving at-risk children, to helping keep families together, and to creating opportunities for strong and sustainable communities around the world. We're working in over 60 countries around the world, and with your help, we can do even more. There's an old African proverb I love that says, if you want to run fast, run alone. But if you want to run far, run together. At Orphan's Promise, we want to run far so we can touch the lives of as many orphaned and vulnerable children as possible. But we don't want to go alone. We're out to change the world, one child, one family, one community at a time. Will you join us? CBN presents The Transforming Word, Volume 3. Those who walk in wisdom are kept safe. The wise inherit honor. Take a journey through the book of Proverbs with Pat Robertson. In this dynamic audio CD, you'll learn biblical principles for gaining wisdom, favor, and anointing. Plus, as a special bonus, you'll receive a DVD of Pat's teaching, The Three Blessings. Call now to get The Transforming Word, Volume 3, and The Three Blessings today. Christmas is celebrated all over the world, especially in the land where it all began, Israel. Emily Jones has this look at how Christians in the Holy Land celebrate the birth of Jesus. The Christmas season is in full swing, and a favorite gift for many people is an olive wood carving made from trees right here in the Holy Land. Many Christian families here in Israel take old olive trees, carve beautiful images in the wood, and then sell them to believers around the world. CBN met up with an Arab Christian shopkeeper in Jerusalem who works with Christians from Bethlehem to create carvings that celebrate the birth of Jesus. We look at it in the Bible, you know, the dove that came to Noah, came back with the olive branch. So olive means hope. They carve biblical stories into wood and people enjoy it. It's beautiful and lives for a long time. And we like it because it's a family heirloom from a mother to a daughter, from a father to son. The ornaments and figurines are made from trees that are 700 to 1500 years old and they last for years. While many Christians around the world are fleeing persecution throughout the Middle East, Israel provides a safe haven and a new life for Christians. The largest Christian city in Israel is Nazareth, the boyhood home of Jesus and the place where Gabriel appeared to Mary. We spoke to Christians who say they are happy to have found safety in Israel. I believe that Israel is my country. I live here. This is the country that protects me as a Christian. I live here in freedom. If I compare myself to other Christians in the Middle East and the way they live, I have a freedom of speech, I have freedom of movement. Shadi Kalul is one of many Christians who still speak the language of Jesus, Aramaic to this very day. I can't think of a better Christmas song to sum up this beautiful season than O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. CBN spoke with Claire Fawn from the University of the Holy Land who explained the song as it was performed by violinist Maurice Scalar in Jerusalem St. Anne's Church. Take a look. O Come, O Come, Emmanuel is really a beloved hymn, and most people don't realize that this hymn was composed to be an Advent song, not a Christmas carol at all. Each one is based on one of the titles of the Messiah that is found in the Old Testament. It has an echo of the past, but a tremendous anticipation of that glorious coming when the rod of Jesse, the key of David, the one who is almighty, God with us, will establish his kingdom on earth. That was so beautiful. Well, that's it for Inside Israel. For more stories just like these, you can watch our Jerusalem Dateline program every week. From Washington, D.C., uncompromising stories, interviews, and analysis from veteran journalists David Brody, Escalating Fight, Jenna Browder, Goes his words carefully, Ben and Kennedy, Plan to join him, and Amber Strong. For impeachment, grows a little bit louder. Bringing you the political news that matters. We get out and tell the story of the progress that we're making in this country. Watch Faith Nation, weeknights at 6 on the CBN News Channel. On the home front. 
Thanks for joining us for CBN's On the Home Front, where we highlight what the men and women of America's military do to defend our country. CBN honors the men and women in our military with an initiative called Helping the Home Front. It partners with churches across the country to meet the needs of their military families, from repairing homes to wiping out medical bills for wounded veterans. On the Home Front, Tuesday morning at 1030. The Lord gives wisdom from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He holds success in store for the upright. He is a shield to those whose walk is blameless, for he guards the course of the just and protects the way of his faithful ones. Pat Robertson records this dynamic audio CD, The Transforming Word, Volume 3, available now. Meet the pastors who are preaching the gospel in a fresh, fearless way. I'm Roberto Torres Cedillo. Join me each week for Next Gen Voices. And watch God transform a generation. Finally today, a group of Christian activists is bringing the story of Jesus' birth right to the center of action in Washington. Take a look. So why would a camel be hanging out on Capitol Hill? Well, it's not just for the fun of the tourists. There's actually a big point to be made here about your religious liberty rights. Each year, Christian activists fighting for those rights go between the U.S. Supreme Court and the U.S. Capitol to put on a live nativity scene, including baby Jesus and all the players gathered around his manger more than 2,000 years ago. A lot of people forget it between the hustle, the bustle, all the stuff that goes, the politics on Capitol Hill. There's a reason that we do this. It's the reason for the season, and it's the birth of Jesus Christ. Some might complain the specific location of this nativity scene violates the separation of church and state. Lawyer Matt Staver of the Liberty Council says it really doesn't. There is no separation of church and state that requires the government to censor religious viewpoints in speech. And this is clearly the essential message of the Christmas season. Our First Amendment right gives us the right to get permits and to hold different events on Capitol Hill, and our event happens to be our outreach, which is the live nativity. Because he is the bread of life, heralded by the hosts of heaven. Participants simply prayed, worshiped, and read from the Bible, nothing else. We're not mixing politics in with this. We're not pushing any type of legislation. We're just letting you know what the true reason, the true uh, time of the year is. And to share that with not only people here in the nation's capital, but the people around the world will be surprised as they see a live nativity in front of the United States Supreme Court. Paul Strand, CBN News, Capitol Hill. Well, that's going to do it for all of us here. Thanks so much for joining us and for watching. And from all of us here at Christian World News, Merry Christmas and God bless you.